Another common question we're getting is, what is happening now? Is it like 2008? Are we in a housing market crash? all over again. Well, if you look at the annual home price appreciation for the six years leading up to the 2008 crash, from 2000 to 2005, we saw an increase from 6.5% to 12.5%, which is really significant. But if you look at our annual appreciation from the six years prior to today, from 2014 to 2019, our home price appreciation only ranged from 4.4 to 6.4%, which is nowhere near the high levels of appreciation prior to the 2008 crash. Really, the highest year in the last six years is not even equal to the lowest year at home price appreciation leading up to the housing market crash in 2008. This means that we haven't had as aggressive of levels of appreciation over the past six years. It has been more normal, as we call it. Also, if you look at the graph from the Mortgage Bankers Association and you look at the Mortgage Credit Availability Index, meaning how easy is it to get a loan, and you look at this peak on the graph, back in 2006, the taller the graph is, the easier it is to get a loan. And then if you look at the crash at the time of the housing bubble, this graph was high. So what that means is it was very easy for people to get a loan during the housing crash in 2008. But if you compare all of this and compare how easy it is to get a loan now today on the left side of the graph, now you're gonna see that it's much more difficult to loan and to qualify for a loan. Another good point is that back in the crash in 2008, we had 8.2 months of supply of inventory on the market. And we know that having any more inventory above six months puts us in what we call a buyer's market. But if we look at where we're at today, we currently only have 1.7 months of inventory in our market, which means that we're still in a seller's market. And also right now, if we look at this graph showing the total home equity cashed out by Freddie Mac during the 2008 crash, we had $824 billion of money refinanced on homes. But today we only have 232 billion. So we have a lot more equity in our homes now. During the 2008 crash, people were buying cars, boats, and using their homes as an ATM. They were financing their lifestyles, but today consumers are treating equity very differently. And now today, 54% of homes have at least 50% equity. In 2008, homes were leveraged to the till and people owned more than they were worth. So they were just simply walking away. But today when people have so much equity in their homes, they're not going to walk away from them. And lastly, according to Zillow and the National Association of Realtors, in 2008, the percent of median income needed to purchase a home was 25.4% of a household's income. So this was the income needed to pay the mortgage. But today, that same number is only 14.8%. So the household income needed is significantly less today than it was in 2008. And if we look at all of these things compared to 2008 to today, most of the factors that led to the crash in 2008, they just don't exist today. One thing that's different um, is that in 2008, the unemployment rate was 13.2%, and today we're at 20.6% with the current pandemic. So obviously that's gonna have a negative impact on the economy, but slowly as pandemic isolation and social distancing starts to ease up, our hope is that people will start to get their jobs back. So we're not saying what will or will not happen in the housing market. We're just talking about the factors contributing to the 2008 crash and how they're not present here today. It's really aren't our opinions. We're just stating what the experts are saying. And we thought that this information might be of service to you. Feel free to reach out to us here at Coil and Burning Real Estate Team with any questions or concerns that you might have. We're always here to help and make it a great home buying and selling day.